Hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be a server 2008 R2 upgrade to server 2012 R2. And it's a fairly simple process. Uh, what we're going to need to start with is we're going to need the ISO image um, or the just simple setup uh, files from Microsoft, uh, whether you have the disk or if you want to download, you know, the image file offline. What I chose to do is, since this is a virtual environment and this is a VM, uh, I went ahead and downloaded the server 2012 R2 ISO image and I mounted it as a virtual disk using VMware. I have a video uh, on this channel showing how to do that if you need any assistance with that. Again, your other option is you can simply just go to the Microsoft Volume Licensing Center and download the ISO and get the same thing. But uh, what we're going to go ahead and do now is open up this and we're going to run the setup file for server 2012. So this is going to give us a few options here. Once it does its copying of the temporary files, which will give it just a moment to do so. Okay, so the next option we have here is to go online and install updates. Now, I would recommend doing this uh, in most cases as long as the server that you're upgrading has an act active internet connection. So in my case, uh, I do have an active internet connection, but I'm going to follow up and you know update everything manually after I do the upgrade. So the upgrade process is not much different um, if you go the online version, essentially all the, the same instructions. So now what we have here is we have the option of choosing between some different versions. I have, you know, data center and standard. In most cases, if it's a smaller environment you're working on, you're only going to see standard. Um, data center, just for those that don't know, is an option that Microsoft gives you. And it essentially gives you the option to purchase a uh, site license based on the amount of CPU sockets in the virtual uh, host. So in my case, I have a two CPU uh, you know, Dell PowerEdge server. So they licensed me, um, you know, based on that. And then I can install as many copies of server 2012 and later uh, on that one host. Um, so I'm going to choose the server with GUI. And of course, you have the core installation option if you're just looking for command line based stuff. Uh, in most cases, I think people are going to choose the GUI, which is just the normal graphical version that everybody's used to. So we're going to proceed here. It's going to take it a few minutes just to get ready. Uh, make sure you read the all important license terms. And then here's a really important step here. So anybody that's installed Windows, I'm sure has seen this uh, option. And if you're installing fresh Windows, you would usually go to the custom and you know, you would format the drive and install. In our case, of course, since we're doing an upgrade, I want to select the upgrade option and it say, you know, says right there that it's going to keep files and settings. All very basic. So this is probably one of the most important parts that it's going to do here. Um, and as you can see, I actually have the dreaded red X. Uh, basically what the compatibility check is doing is making sure you have enough hard drive space, make sure there's nothing in the background that would prevent you from doing in the upgrade. So it looks like I will need to resolve. Um, it's likely that I was, you know, in the middle of an update that I wasn't aware of. And there's something that's, you know, in the process of uh, being hung up on the system. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot this and I'll bring the screen right back to this point once I do so. Okay, so I went ahead and rebooted the system like it mentioned I needed to. And it's a great uh, opportunity to actually show you that it doesn't always just work right out of the gate. So my case was very simple. Um, again, I think it was just a hung update or something like that. Um, but I have had cases before where I didn't have enough hard drive space, but I didn't realize that until I started the upgrade process. Um, the nice thing is, is all I did was I went ahead and closed this window after it told me I needed to resolve that. And I went and resolved the issue, rebooted the machine, and then you can simply just relaunch the, you know, the installer. Um, it doesn't cause any problems. So here on out, it looks like we're good. Um, 
on all the compatibility you know, checks. Uh, one thing I want to mention before we start the process, uh, it goes without saying, but make sure you back up. Uh, make sure you have a solid, you know, confirmed backup copy of this virtual machine. Um, and, you know, the more important it is, you know, a lot of people uh, in the industry will, you know, create a backup and never test them. So, you know, they hope they work, but, and I've been guilty of that myself. Uh, so I, what I've done myself is I have made it a point to start a backup recovery um, scheduled task where once a month I test all of my vital backup. Um, I use Veeam backup. So I, I use, um, you know, a complete process where I will recover a random virtual machine and I will do, you know, periodic every six months, I will test every single virtual machine uh, backup that I have using Veeam. Um, and you can kind of adjust it based on the vi you know, the vitalness of the machine that you're backing up and trying to test. Um, so just make sure you consider all of that. Uh, one other thing you might want to do is, you know, note the IP address of the machine. In most cases, you'll have that documented, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, but just things to keep in mind, you know, do some checks prior to doing your upgrade. So now that we're all good on this, I'm going to click next. Uh, now this process is going to probably take, I've seen it take everywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. Uh, one thing to note, you might get into a scenario where it appears to be doing a boot loop where it just continuously reboots. Um, don't abandon ship at that point. You know, my rule of thumb is, you know, you, if you're in a hurry trying to do an upgrade or something like this, um, you probably shouldn't be doing it. So do it during a time where you have ample, you know, ample amount of time to wait out potential issues where on a boot loop scenario, you don't know if it's, you know, actually doing something every time it's rebooting or if it is truly stuck in a boot loop. Um, I've had multiple upgrades where they've rebooted 10 plus times and you start thinking that something's wrong. But if you wait them out, a lot of times they do come back to a login screen. Um, if you do interrupt them during that loop, um, or, you know, what you think is a loop, you're likely going to cause more problems, uh, anyway. So give it time, um, you know, budget 30, 45 minutes into, you know, the whole process, uh, an hour if, if you can. Uh, that being said, this is going to take some time. So I'm going to pause the video and I will come back, uh, when there's anything of interest to show you. From this point forward, it's really nothing but a bunch of generic Windows progress screens, um, and then eventually we'll end up into the new 2012 login screen. So I'll jump back to the video as soon as it uh, shows me anything of importance. All right, so logging in for the first time on the 2012. It's probably going to take just an extra minute to process everything. So we can immediately see that we are now on 2012. Uh, it looks like it might have a little small issue um, with server manager, but nothing to be too worried about. We'll run Windows updates uh, and make sure everything's solid. One thing I do notice is that you can see that the network connection has some issues, which it definitely didn't prior to the upgrade. This is one of the things I was mentioning that, you know, it's always a good idea to make sure that you have, you know, the IP address written down. Um, and it looks like it lost its IP. So this was originally assigned a static IP since it's a server. I don't assign DHCP on that VLAN. So I can go back now that I took note of that IP and update it accordingly. But aside from that, everything looks solid. So that's literally all there is to it. Um, like I said, be aware of the fact that it might do multiple reboots. You know, don't lose hope on it, give it some time. And at the end, you should have uh, server 2012 R2. Thanks for watching. Check out more videos coming in the near future. We're going to start a new series showing uh, complete ground up builds for corporate networks and systems showing you everything from racking the server to designing the networks. Uh, to deploying Active Directory and all vital services. And as well as we're going to get into some other series, just showing some more advanced networking. So stay tuned for more of that. And thanks for watching.